And welcome to Capital Talk on the Road. If you've been watching the program, you know we're coming to you from Abidjan all this week, the city that was once known as Le Petit Paris. And the theme of the week, as you know, is movers and shakers of the continent. On the bench today, a young lady who actually wants to try to bridge the digital divide. That's right, 12 years studying and working in America, Silicon Valley no less, working for a Fortune 500 company before she started her own, calling it CBS, involved in technology transfer. She wants to come back to the continent and begin a domain for the entire continent, not the .ke or .za that you see in different countries, or .org or .com. She wants a .africa. That's what she's going to push for. She is pushing for. She's got endorsements already from the African Union and several other organizations. She's literally going to go country to country until all of them decide and agree to have a dot Africa because there is a dot Asia, a dot EU. Why not dot Africa? Bridging the digital divide. On the bench today, Ethiopian born Sophia Bekele. Sophia, welcome to the bench in Abidjan. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, so listen, bridging the digital divide, that's, that's a huge task. You know that. Is it going to be possible in a place like this? Well, Africa is one place where there is opportunity to do so. And bridging the divide is one step at a time. It is not, Rome was not built in one day, so we're going to do it one step at a time. But unlike Asia, Africa is 53, 54 countries. And getting a dot-com domain for the continent, is that doable or is that just, is that wishful thinking? No, it can't be wishful thinking. All, the more countries, the better. The, unit, the unity for all countries can be expressed in one domain. One billion people, 54 countries, including the diaspora, being the 54 and um, one domain. That's the ambition of Dot Connect Africa which is going to be the host organization for the Dot Africa domain. Which you started yourself? Yes, I was part of the founder uh, and I had the vision of it because I was working in an organization that actually issues the license, coordinates the, um, the internet, techni uh, the technical coordination of the internet. It's based out of California. It's called ICANN, I-C-A-N-N. -N. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was a policy advisor few years back I was elected and I came, I came up with that idea. Of course the initiative was thought of before but I managed to push it through the organization and bring it to Africa. I was uh, elected as an ad, uh, one of the uh, African advisors. Actually I was the first one on the policy advisor. I was a woman as well in a sense and so I came in and asked what can I do for Africa because I, you know we needed to do something for Africa and so here we are. Um, going to the major organizations that could assist an easy entry was through the African Union and the UNECA also which coordinates the African uh, ministries and so they have endorsed it for us and that's like a, a green light for us to go and uh, to each country and campaign for it. Okay I'm gonna come back to that in a moment so if you take us back obviously you studied IT this was your specialty and you ended up in Silicon Valley yes. take us back. Okay take you back from Ethiopia went to study for my higher education uh, uh, bachelor's degree in IT, MBA, similar management information systems, and then worked for uh, Fortune 500 companies, mostly in the banking industry, Bank of America, and uh, Bank of New York, and so forth, and then consulting in Pricewaterhouse, uh, and then uh, start my own gig, which is entrepreneurship, and uh, used uh, CBS International as a company I start, uh, set up in California, and then uh, came to e Africa using Ethiopia, my own country, as a base to do a tra technology transfer. So after getting involved in big projects, uh, even African Union was one of the major international contracts that we did. We did uh, infrastructure work for them. And then after that, uh, we did other national projects and then we started uh, building African businesses online by doing, um, hosting them, uh, giving them uh, websites and hosting them in California and so forth. So that's, we already, are in the industry in, in, in that sort of way. But you understand the African infrastructure was not developed. This was maybe about six, seven years back. Now, because of the fiber and uh, the cable, or all the landing that's being done, that is all, the, the Africa is more than ready to be part of the information society, being part of the internet society in a sense, actually. And so we're very excited. I think the Dot Africa domain is the right 
time for it to flourish in Africa, um, being part of the new African infrastructure. As you mentioned, Africa was way, way behind in terms of infrastructure and all the technology. Can we catch up? Can we bridge that divide? Well, you can imagine now, a, a lot of the fiber uh, cable uh, landing being done all over West Africa, East Africa, the SA, and all that, that's going to, a few years from now, you're going to see, look at Kenya, for example. One of the reasons we started an office in Kenya is because of the infrastructure, the availability, and we have that. We have found a lot of people who are um, very excited about just going online. Businesses need to keep going online because of that they will have to purchase domain names and instead of going to the dot coms and dot orgs they just go directly to dot africa which gives them uh, an identity that crosses over all over africa it promotes regional integration because of the fact that you know people their uh, products and services they want to sell more than the region uh, itself so it's it will unite africa in a sense hmm. okay so you come up with this concept you take it to the african union they endorse it and UNECA, and which UNECA. is a very critical organization Correct. as well, because it's a, the econo, it's manages the economics, or, or I would say the African ministers, ICT ministers come under that. So it coordinates the economies of Africa versus African Union is political, as you know. And you've done this the last three months alone. Yes, since, since uh, no, the endorsement came in before, but uh, the whole uh, hype. And the whole uh, bringing the whole continent together happened in the last maybe five, six months. What, ne what happens next? What's the next what move? What happens, the next move is to actually uh, go around African continent, lobby for uh, support. Uh, actually, it doesn't even require uh, lobbying. Uh, people are very excited. They take the continent names very seriously. We've been asked by actually non-Africans, like when we say dot, they want to shorten the dot Africa name to what they're used to, like the dot KE or ZE. But we, most Africans actually feel dot Africa should not be cut. They're very national, uh, pan-African about it. And so we're still, uh, we're, we keep the dot Africa name for now, but we do consultations with the various governments, with the various ICT ministries, and then get their support, buy-in, and then once we do that, we apply for the license with the ICANN, with the international organization that gives out the license, which has delayed it so far as a result of the space, the top level domain space is being liberalized. After 10 years of monopoly by the dot coms and dot net, now they're liberalizing it so it's going to allow not only dot Africa, but it's going to allow like the dot food, dot bank, dot travel and so forth to do the same. So, but they are commercial entities, but we are more of geo names. So in that sense, um, uh, w unfortunately, we had fallen under the, you know, the application process for everyone. For example, .eu and .asia directly applied with the organization a few years back when there is no procedure in place. Now that there's procedure in place, we fall on that, so we have to follow procedure. That's the only thing of the delay for the licensing. So now once we apply, then it's a go ahead. We launch it immediately and we hope what we have already spent an, a year or two popularizing in Africa, people will be able to be aware of the benefits, be aware, sensitized to it, and then obviously they would uh, purchase. That's what we think. All things being equal, when would that be? Uh, we look at this next year, ne next year, mid-year. Okay, and yeah. you know, Sophia, doing business in Africa is so difficult. I mean, yeah. you, you, you probably know yeah. that already. Yes. Ready for this challenge? Yes, very much so. Because if we as diasporans don't participate and assist the continent, who will? So uh, our vision is, no matter how hard it is in Africa, we are going to pursue, we're going to overcome it, we're going to persist, and persistence will get results. So uh, we're very determined to pursue it and not quit along the way. Were you surprised that all this time, there is dot .Asia, there is dot .EU, and Africa hasn't bothered to get on this dot .continent thing? Yes, yes, because when I was, uh, again, uh, uh, elected an ICANN, one of the first thing I said is, what's, I'm an African policy advisor, supposedly, so what is there to do for Africa? So there was not really an African agenda, and uh, I had asked even uh, there were Africans there, like us, um, uh, you know, pushing for things, this and that, and there were other internet initiatives that were launched as a result, which I have to give credit to, but Dot Africa was remaining uh, unattended to. So I, you know, I said, why not Dot Africa? And so 
uh, people came around it and uh, we launched it. Mostly the assistance I got was really from the diaspora group. However, to bring it to the continent, uh, it took me shuttling back and forth for a long time and then finally uh, we got it up and running. In terms of endorsements, at least, we're very excited. After the AU, after the, the, uh, the ECA, who's next? I mean, African who's Development next? Bank, have they been... Yeah, involved? well, that's one of the reasons we're here, trying to get their attention. Uh, actually, African Development Bank, the regional integration group in the past, have been very supportive of the project. They never actually formally came out and said it, but they, we have had informal approval on it. So now we're trying to take it to the leadership level where um, they would give it uh, the full stamp like we got from the other two uh, partner institutions for Africa. So we hope with the governance model that we've built for the Dot Africa, which is a non-profit and then outsourcing the registry, uh, we hope that these major sponsors, the three organizations, would be part of the board of trustees to oversight the policy, the public policy aspect of the domain name. Because domain names, uh, they're not just a branding or categorization of, uh, uh, of entities, in a sense. They, there is a lot of public policy issues around it, like privacy, security, uh, many things that we deliberate um, in, uh, in ICON. So therefore, we want the sponsor organizations, the major ones, to be part of that policy uh, outfit so that we can continue to dialogue about what's right and what's not in the Internet that fits for Africa. So that's why we need support more from African countries and entities. So we're looking at Internet organizations, for example, Kenya, Safaricom, Zane, all those are prime candidates to be not only participating in our project, but sponsors and users, as well as um, beneficiaries from, uh, from such um, uh, for, from such continents. Okay, so the domain .africa, would that replace .co, say .ke, or would it be .co, .ke, .africa? Well, there is uh, an opportunity to do cross-marketing. There are, uh, for example, I think uh, about now 26 African countries are probably have their CCTLDs, as called country code dem uh, domain mm -hmm. names. And uh, so, but it's not well developed in Africa. It was only maybe in the last three years that an organization came together, a non-profit, that tried to build capacity within these uh, national entities. Now, our Africa, we don't want to appear like we're dominating the market. Not only that, we want to help the national CCTLD. So we've created a second level domain name where that uh, like that CEO dot Africa could be manageable if people want to do that. But, you know, there is a, a cost associated with it because they have to purchase that um, uh, KE and then, and then dot Africa as well. So it's up to you to determine what you want to be. Just go directly to Africa or just use the second level domain names. But there's an opportunity for us to actually to do a cross marketing for, for that. Sophia, I want to talk more about that because that's fascinating and also you know, it's, it, Africa's a big challenge, you know, it's a huge continent, big challenge, but obviously, you know, so far you seem to be up to the challenge. Uh, can we bridge that divide? I keep saying, that, are we going to be able to bridge that divide? But first, let's take a break. Sophia Bekele, good grief. Are you sitting back? Young lady wants to bridge that digital divide, and she's doing it one country at a time. She says it's possible. In fact, she says it's about time. There's plenty more coming up after the break with Africa's movers and shakers. Don't even think of going away. Capital Talk is back in a moment.